Hi everyone, my name is Emanuela, and today I'll talk about Mostra, which is a flexible framework for balancing multi multiple objectives in recommender systems. And this is joint work with Rishab, James, and Munia at Spotify. So recommender systems are at the core of many digital platforms. In Airbnb, they help travelers find a place to stay. In Amazon, they help customers find products they need. And in Spotify, they help listeners find music. However, while this user-centric view is pervasive in recommender systems, the parts from themselves are actually multi-stakeholders. For instance, in Airbnb, it's also important to help owners find tenants. And in Spotify, it's important to help content creators reach many users. So this is the problem of multi-stakeholder recommendations, which is faced by many digital platforms. And it's the topic that we study in this paper. So about this paper, um, as I've mentioned, our goal is to study multi-objective recommendations. And we do so specifically for music at Spotify, where stakeholders are users and content creators. Our contributions fall under two umbrellas. The first is a characterization of the multi-objective problem in user recommendations, where we show also the difficulty of jointly satisfying multiple goals. And the second contribution stand is a new approach for this problem, which is called Mostra. And here, the goal of our system is to pro provide a flexible framework for system designers to balance multiple objectives at inference time. And we achieve this through a novel beam search algorithm that is both submodular and counterfactual. So let's see why it is important to study multi-objective recommendations. And for this, we consider the use case of Spotify, which is a major music streaming platform. And specifically, we look at around 500 million radio streaming sessions that happened over a seven day period across 10 million users. And in terms of objectives, we consider four binary objectives in this paper. The first one is short-term user satisfaction, which we call SAT. And it's the probability that a user uh, completely listens to a music track. And in a view, this is what uh, user-centric uh, single objective recommender systems will model when they're trained. But on, we also look at three more creator-centric metrics, uh, which we want to maximize. The first one is boost, which denotes songs that the platform uh, would like to boost for strategic importance, for, instance, for example, to align with certain trends. And the second one is exposure, which denotes songs that come from emerging artists. And finally, we also consider discovery, which um, denotes songs that belong to artists that are unknown to a given user. So now that we have all these objectives, the first thing we try to do is to understand how they um, play and interact with the user satisfaction score that we usually model. And for this, uh, you can see here a scatter plot where the x-axis denotes the percentage of songs that are labeled as discovery in a given streaming session, while the x-axis is the average set score for the corresponding session. So when we look at these plots for all the creator-centric metrics, we find that exposure to emergent artists and boost to strategic content are not correlated with user satisfaction. On the other hand, we see that if we surface many discovery tracks, this ends up hurting user satisfaction as listeners tend to skip most of them. Um, next, we try to understand uh, the diversity of objectives that happen within sessions. And for this, we plot the percentage of songs in a session from each objective. And you can see here on the right-hand side, a ternary plot, it shows that music sessions are indeed very diverse. We have some sessions that consist only of songs from a single objective, while other sessions have songs from all three objectives. So in a way, we anticipate that there will be more competition in certain sessions than in others. And when we then plot the distribution of SAT scores for songs that are labeled with a given objective, we find that the satisfaction varies considerably for both exposure and boost metrics. On, on the other hand, it is usually much lower for discovery. Uh, nevertheless, we can still see that discovery tracks can lead to a high SAT score. And, and so the point, main point is if we choose correctly, 
then creator-centric songs can keep satisfaction high while also maximizing the other objectives. So now that we have a better understanding of uh, the multi-objective landscape, we can move on to our proposed approach for addressing it, uh, which we call MOSFRA. So to reiterate, um, our goal in this work is, is that of multi-objective music sequencing, where a model is tasked with ranking songs from a large pool of candidates to satisfy both user and creator-centric objectives. So to tackle this task, what we need is a model that is both set-aware and is capable of making multi, uh, multiple objective decisions. And another important property in multi-stakeholder scenarios is that these objectives are often vary, varying very quickly based on business needs. So one desirable property uh, is that the system designers have a flexible and controllable system that can be adapted to these different objectives. And this is where our technical contribution in this paper explicitly is. And for this, we introduced Monstra, which is a multi-objective set transformer that affords the flexibility requested by system designers. And we do so by introducing a novel beam search algorithm, which involves submodular multi-objective scoring, as well as content selection through uh, counterfactual filtering on the user metrics. So here's a high level overview of our system. So given a user and a pool of songs, they're first mapped into a vector space through a representation layer. A set transformer encoder is then used to provide contextualized representations for each song. At training time, the representation layer and the encoder are optimized to predict the user satisfaction metric, um, which represents, uh, which we have, we have called as SAT. Now, at inference time, a multi-objective decorator flags those songs that meet some target objectives. And the encoded pool of song, as well as their creator-centric objectives, are given as input to our beam search algorithm, which at the end returns an ordered list of songs that satisfy user and creator-centric goals. And since the representation layer and the set transformer encoder are standard modules, uh, I'm going to focus now on the, our novel beam search algorithm instead. So in this work, uh, we revisit uh, beam search for providing recommendations and adapt it to flexible multi-objective scenarios. So given uh, the encodings of the music tracks in the pool, a decorator is used to flag those uh, songs that meet creator-centric objectives. And then a multi-objective counterfactual scoring is used to recommend the song to surface at each step. So let's see how this works in practice for the second step of decoding. So given the remaining tracks in the pool, a standard ranking algorithm would rank them, I'm sorry about that. Um, a standard ranking algorithm will rank them according to the corresponding predictions for the user-centric metric. Hence, uh, the green track would recommend it next by a um, single objective metric uh, that would be used. Um, however, in this paper, we use this ranking to perform a counterfactual filtering step where all the tracks with predicted score, uh, SAT score, uh, that are below an epsilon percent of the next best track have dropped. So epsilon is a parameter that can easily be tuned by system designers and allows them to control the degree of suboptimal recommendations at any decoding steps, which basically provides a worst case aware scenarios for the SAT uh, objective. And next, a uh, submodular set function is applied to rescore and rerank the tracks. So the tracks with objectives that are not well represented in the beam so far are scored higher. So as a result of these steps, the orange track instead of the green one is now recommended as the next song. And the same sequence of steps then applied to um, rank the whole pool of songs in a sequential way. So let's now see how this uh, framework actually performs on um, our data. 
So as I said earlier, we use radio data from Spotify, uh, which we split into training validation test sets, um, ensuring that each user is present in only one of these splits. Uh, we have a number of baselines. So first we consider single objective, single, single objective track level models, um, such as a multi-layer perceptron, which here we call uh, DNN. And then we consider single objective set level models, uh, which include a set of the art set rank method by Tang and colleagues. And finally, we benchmark multi-objective set level models, which include our Mostra proposal, as well as two baselines. The first one is MO-LTR, uh, which is a naive approach to multi-objective learning, learning to rank. Uh, the second one, called Mostra Weighted Sum, is an interest-based extension of MO-LTR, which performs a weighted sum of all the objectives at each step. So here is a big scale table of results, but uh, we're gonna go and analyze it together. So it, it reports NDCG at five and 10 uh, for our four target metrics. So if you look at the single objective models um, that are trained to predict user satisfaction, we see that track level and set level methods are on par on the SAT metric. With set level models, however, being able to encode the full set of songs at once. For these models, if we, also, if we then look at the loss function that is used to optimize them, uh, we surprisingly found that RMSC, which is a point-wise objective, outperforms list-wise ones such as attention rank. And this is in contrast with recent advancements in the literature and encourages further investigation in future work. Um, moving now to multi-objective uh, models. Uh, we first see that it's not easy to train a multi-objective learning to rank model. As in this case, what we see is that it loses more than 15 points in SAT compared to our SAT rank baseline without giving much benefit uh, in other metrics. On the other hand, uh, our inference-based beam search with even a simple sum performs better, but it's hard to control. So you can see that, for instance, compared to set rank, it either achieves gains in user satisfaction, but resulting in lower performance on creator-centric objectives, or it gains up to 20% points in exposure and discovery, but severely hurts user satisfaction. And on the other hand, our proposed monster method, which uses counterfactual submodular scoring, affords much finer control. So if we compare it to set rank, it achieves a slight gain of 1% and DCG at five on user satisfaction and three to 10% gains on creator centric metrics. And importantly, these epsilon parameters allows us to set the degree of maximum user dissatisfaction we are willing to accept uh, while still trying to maximize the other objectives. And we perform a bunch of cool analysis in our paper to better understand the behavior of Mostra. Uh, we don't have time to go through them now, but basically what we find is that the performance um, of our algorithm is in line with the analysis from historical data that I presented earlier. We also find that Mostra actually retrieves good uh, creator section songs and that our parameter epsilon indeed affords very fine grain control for system designers to trade off different um, objectives. So I'll go check out our paper uh, for uh, looking at these details. And so to sum up, I've told you about the problem of multi-objective recommendations, which is typical of current digital, digital platform. And then I've shown you that complex interplay that exists among objectives for task of music recommendations at Spotify. I then talked about the problem of just-in-time multi-objective optimization which is a challenge that is faced by many system designers to meet dynamic business needs. As I first approach towards this goal, I introduced Mostra. Um, Mostra tackles this challenge through a novel beam search algorithm that re-ranks the available songs via counterfactual and submodular scoring. Our experiments show that Mostra is on par with state-of-the-art models on user satisfaction, while also achieving significant gains on other metrics. In future work, we foresee extensions of our approach to account for global cross-session objectives, as well as trainable relaxations of our algorithm. And if you're curious to see how Mostra performs on your dataset, uh, please go check out our code on GitHub. And 
yes, this is all for me. Uh, okay, thanks, Sima. That's a great talk. Um, does anyone have questions? Uh, so, well, if not, I have a question. Um, what motivates you to solve this uh, problem from decoding perspective? I mean, why are you focusing on like pr propose a beam search method rather than say um, like improves the multi, multi objective learning process from the training or optimization perspective? Yeah, so like um, the problem is that it's hard to balance these objectives. Um, during training. So you basically have some, you don't have a true loss. What you have is our binary uh, flags that tells you, hey, this is track is going to be boosted or this track comes from an emerging artist. So our first approach, um, is one of the baselines, which is MOLTR, is a learning to rank uh, trainable system where we basically sum the, uh, the losses across the different objectives. But what we see is that you have to do an extensive hyperparameter search to balance the different uh, objectives so that you don't hurt user satisfaction much. On the other hand, uh, here we just say, okay, we take a model that's already been deployed and we just want to extend it uh, on the fly uh, to give multiple objective recommendations. And we do so in a way that is controllable. So if today you need to boost one specific metric uh, in a given region of the world, then you can easily do it by changing this epsilon parameter that, uh, that we have in the model without having to retrain your model. Mm 